here this morning is James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. This is probably the week for me when things begin to feel like Christmas, because this is when the evening get-togethers start, when we begin to look at the program and uh, the cantata, cantata. It, it just starts to begin to feel like Christmas for me this week in December. We're doing our Christmas this coming weekend here um, at our house this coming weekend, so it's, it's starting to feel a little bit more like I woke up this morning, there was frost all over the truck all over the yard. I slipped and slid all the way to the church. It's starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas. I remember looking at one of my Facebook posts and one of my friends that lives in Florida, they had a palm tree decorated with some Christmas lights and we thought, oh, can't wait for Christmas. That's not Christmas. That, that can't be correct. I would have a hard time celebrating Christmas in 80 degree. I, I would do it. I would suffer through it. But it would feel like and some people would say online shopping isn't Christmas. If you want the Christmas experience, you've got to get out to the malls and you've got to battle the crowds and find the parking space. And that and that. Thank God for online shopping. That's what we do. Now. Everything's online with maybe, maybe that small percentage. We had to go to the store yesterday, but it was to return an item we had ordered. <laughs> online because it came broken. So that was the, the only time we've gone shopping, and it may just be the only time, period, this year that we actually go to a store. And, and it was crap, lines were all the way out. So I mean, it was just thank <coughs> God for the online shopping. That's one of his blessings right there. It's one of his, one of his gifts, I think, that's uh, uh, online shopping. And I wonder if the wise men went through any of that as they were selecting their gifts. To bring to Jesus. I wonder if they had a selection from which to choose or if they already knew what they were bringing. I mean, I wonder what it is that these men uh, went through to decide those gifts. Because Matthew really doesn't tell us a whole lot about that process. They weren't wrapped. We know that because they were wise men. And once again, another great gift of God, I think, is the gift bag. Wrapping presents, you know, I do it, but I'll take a gift bag over I wrap presents in tissue paper and newspapers, duct tape, you know, my dad duct tape wrapped Christmas presents. I'll do it. But I think that if the wise men would have wrapped their gifts, we would have heard about it. Matthew would have told us about it. And it would have been something like, and lo, the gifts were secured with seven cubits of high quality paper featuring donkeys and camels. And Joseph provided the huge trash bag for the leftover wrappings. <laughs> and lo, Mary said unto Joseph, Cease, drop it, the leftover wrappings. will use them for future generations. <laughs> and Joseph didst roll his eyes. <laughs> Wrap a gift, throw it in the bag. And we sometimes go overboard. But you know, our gifts um, are an expression of how we feel sometimes about it. You know, I, I would go overboard with cash. She finally had to tell me, no, stop, stop. Thousand dollars is too much. Stop, stop. <laughs> but that's an expression of, of loyalty and love to her. And I think that that's something we receive from God. I mean, we were created in God's image, and God is the greatest giver of gifts ever. He is the greatest giver of gifts ever. And I think our giving is an expression of, of that uh, gift that God gives us. God gave Adam and Eve skins to replace the fig leaves. He gave Noah plans for the ark. He gave the Israelites prophets to speak the truth. He gave us the word. He gave the angels to the shepherds to bring the good news. He gave Joseph patience to better understand what it was that Mary was going through that strange circumstance. He gave the world the Prince of Peace. He gives you and me his one and only son. He's the greatest gift giver. And many times it's not the gift. In fact, I would say all the times it's not the gift per se that you receive that has meaning, but it's what that gift 
represents. It's the thought, the meaning behind it. And we see that with that list I just read. God is the perfect gift giver. For every good and perfect gift comes from Him. And they are gifts of love. They are gifts of thought. They are gifts of meaning. And we can learn a thing or two about what it means to give by looking at how God gives and by looking at what He gives. We can learn that God's gifts are personal. They're personal. He doesn't just randomly select things and say, here you go. They're personal. When I shop for Cassie, I look for a person, a gift that has that meaning or thought behind it. James uh, chapter 2, verse 1 says, Believers in Jesus must not show favoritism. God gave us a personal gift in His Son. His Son came not just for the rich, not just for the poor, not just for us here in America, not just for those over in England. He came for everyone. It is a personal gift because it's a personal relationship that we have as individuals with Jesus. John 12, 46 says, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in the darkness. And in other scriptures surrounding this, we see words like, uh, if anyone believes, or everyone. These are not words that are exclusive, they're inclusive. Everyone has the opportunity. And this is what rubbed the religious leaders of Jesus' time the wrong way. How dare you, Jesus? How dare you give the same opportunities to the poor as you do to the rich, to the sick, to the heathens, to the unclean? How dare you raise up the voices from the dirt? How dare you give them a place? But that's what makes God's gift so personal. Because it's a gift that you relate to on an individual level. And in that individual level that you relate to, that builds up the body that brings and makes us stronger. And that's the second thing. God's gifts are practical. They're gifts that we need. They're gifts that serve a purpose. I remember when the kids were little, and Curtis may not remember this, but he's going to know it now, when they were little. And I worked at that restaurant, and I didn't make a lot of money. And so I would take $30, and I would go to the Dollar Tree, and I would walk out of there with 10 gifts for Courtney and 10 gifts for Curtis and, and, and a gift for mom and dad and my aunts and my uncles and I may even walk out there with a gift for myself. All for $30. Because for me, I wasn't concerned about whether the gifts were perfect or personal. I was more concerned about the quantity. I wanted my tree to look full, filled with these presents. And you know, I don't know. I think that little mirror that I gave my mom that, that when you opened it up and it said, mirror, mirror in your hand, who's the fairest in all the land? I think she liked that. I think any of us would like that kind of a gift. A dollar six? I don't think you can go wrong with that. But thankfully, God doesn't follow our lead when it comes to giving. His gifts have a purpose. There's a meaning behind it. In Ephesians 4.12 we're told by Paul that gifts are to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. He gives gifts that edify the body. He gives gifts that builds the body up, strengthens it, encourages it, empowers it, and all of these things in turn serve one purpose, and that is to give him glory. Those things glorify God. When we use his gifts, they glorify God allow his light to shine in a dark world. And when you look at the Gospels, and you look at the times when Jesus performed miracles or healings or even the apostles, you'll see that those things were done for a purpose. It was done for a purpose. It wasn't just personal satisfaction. It wasn't as though the apostles just walked down the street and said, oh, there's somebody, let's heal them, let's heal them. Let's... It wasn't for that. There was a purpose behind that gift. And that purpose was to advance God's kingdom. To make God known in that region. The gifts of God are gifts that we can use. And they're gifts that not only give Him glory, but they're gifts that can bless us as well. My public speaking. When I think about my preacher, and I think about the power that God gave me to defeat my fear of public speaking, that has given me the opportunity to praise Him and to honor Him and to glorify Him, I wouldn't be here right now 
It's a blessing. So, so, so that, that, that victory that he gave me over public speaking not only glorifies him, but it has become a blessing to me because I would still be working in that restaurant had I not embraced that. I'd be still, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. But it's been a blessing. Those gifts, in turn, can bless us. Of course, his greatest gift came when we have to pay the cross. And through Jesus, we received that gift of eternal life. Something that we all need. Something that we must have if we do not want to spend eternity separated from God. And often in the hustle and the bustle of the Christmas time, when you are out shopping, elbow to elbow, standing in lines for out of how long. Sometimes we lose sight. When we're looking for that perfect gift in the store, we lose sight of the perfect gift that we have been given in Christ. A gift that's personal. A gift that's practical. A gift that is eternal. And if you read the story of the Magi, if you look at that story and, and, and meditate upon it, you'll see that there are actually four gifts there. We always focus on the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh, but there was actually a fourth gift that's there. And that gift was worship. They worshiped Jesus. They gave him the gift of their praise, honor, and worship. They acknowledged Jesus as the King of Kings. They acknowledged Jesus as the Lord of Lords. They acknowledged Jesus that he was above all nations. They did that in his worship, in their worship. Gift giving is fun. Gift giving can be a joy for both the giver and the receiver. I think God enjoys blessing us with gifts. I think he enjoys giving us things. I think he does. I just pray that as we move through this Advent season, that we begin to recognize some of these gifts that he has given us. And that we use those gifts in ways that first glorify Him and two, advances His kingdom. So I invite you to meditate on that this morning, that message and word and scripture and song. Our <coughs> hymn of invitation is Away in a Manger, number 213, Away in a Manger. And as we sing this final hymn for today, I just invite you to meditate uh, to commit, to dedicate, to recommit. Uh, wherever you're at in your life right now, maybe, maybe today's the day as you say, Lord, this Christmas I want to grow closer to you. I want to receive that personal gift that you have for me. So let's stand together. Away in angel, we'll sing the first verse. <laughs>